Welcome back. The University of Namibia's Investment Society hosted their first ever event of the year titled Investing 101, Introduction to Investing. And they featured Ed Tunahango as a senior associate from EOS Capital as the main speaker. He now joins us this evening to share some vital information concerning investing. Ed Tuna, good evening and uh, welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for being here. Uh, as I mentioned, you invited uh, to UNEM's uh, Investment Society's first ever talk, Investment 101. I think there's so much to, to, to talk about that and unpack concerning that and learn around that. Uh, but briefly, just you know, tell us how the engagement uh, went earlier today. Uh, it went quite, quite well. Um, the students were you know, quite inquisitive. Um, and I think that's what, it, uh, that's what I tried to get out of them. Um, and I was really excited about it. I mean, back in the day when I was a student, I was part of my university's, in, my university's investment society. Um, and I really understand the importance of, you know, um, having industry experts, um, you know, give insights to, to students and help them apply the learnings that they, that they have. And I think um, it's a really, really good initiative by the, by the students at UNAM. Um, they have students across um, all faculties. Um, so yeah, I think I really try to keep it um, introductory, basic, um, elementary, um, just you know, to introduce everyone to the concept of investing, um, you know, how to go about it and so forth. Yeah. What's your general perception around uh, not only Namibians, but young Namibians, uh, you know, and their knowledge around uh, investments? Um, I think the knowledge is, uh, I think there's a, there's a huge knowledge gap. Um, I think we, we have a lot of work to do in, in the financial literacy space um, amongst not only young Namibians, but um, Namibians at large. I think, you know, um, I think we understand the concept of investing, we just don't know it. Um, I mean, today I mentioned to the, to the students that uh, an example of investing is your parents paying tuition fees for you because that you know, generates a return in the future. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's that, are you talking about black tax? <laughs> no, no, I mean, just no, just in general. I mean, with, be it for the family or for yourself, it, you know, it's, it's an investment of one form or another. So I right. think um, a, as a nation, we, we have a basic understanding of investment. Um, however, I think in the more formal sense of financial instruments, um, you know, uh, exchanges, uh, equities, bonds, etc. I think that's where there's a deficit. Um, but I think generally speaking, the, the concept of, um, you know, doing something now for a future return is, is something we understand quite well as a nation. Is that your, 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 your definition of, uh, of investments? Yeah, I mean, an investment is really just something you do, an action you take today for a return in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, really, I mean, and there are different types of investments, as mentioned. So um, the talk was, was really targeted at financial investments. Um, but yeah, I think uh, generally an investment is an action taken today for some future return. Let's talk about financial investments then. And, okay. and um, of course, there are long term and there are short term investments. Uh, unpack both for us and of course, what the pros and cons of each would be. Yeah, well, I mean, pros and cons, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say they're, they're universal pros and cons to both lo long term and short term investments. Um, typically, what you'd like to do is to try and understand as an investor your goals, um, your financial goals, um, and then, you know, match your investment strategy to what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, as a young professional, trying to buy a car within the next six months, um, I then have to, you know, match my investment strategy to enable me to achieve that. Um, or, you know, if I'm trying to retire, um, let's say, early uh, by the age of 45 or so, then I need to then, you know, have a more longer term investment strategy that will allow me to achieve my longer term goals. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that there are pros and cons, um, you know, that I could universally um, attribute to either a short term or a longer term investment. Um, but I, they, I mean, they do have, you know, their differences and, you know, uh, benefits and uh, cons depending on uh, the, the particular circumstance. And I context. use that specific phrase pros and cons because the general idea is that, you know, if you invest in something short term, mm -hmm. um, you know, the returns are less than as opposed to if you would do this long term. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it really depends if, if you're investing short term, in, if you make, if your investment strategy is into, you know, short term returning assets um, consistently and you do that, you know, you, so you make short term investments consistently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, essentially you're still, you know, going to win in the long term. Right, right. Uh, I mean, a good example I can use is, you know, we're in a high interest rate um, environment right now. Um, banks are going to be foreclosing on vehicles um, and houses and, you know, you could possibly get a car for cheap at an auction mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, probably sell that within two months and that, that would have been a really good investment. Right. Um, so I, I don't think necessarily, you know, either strategy has, uh, you know, you, as mentioned, universal benefits um, or cons to it. But uh, I think depending on the particular context, um, you can then, you know, on a case by case basis, um, attribute pros and cons to that scenario. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say that, you know, the idea of investments has changed over time amongst the previously disadvantaged community? So I think a lot of people, especially black people, come from a background where we don't understand the need mm. to invest your money. You know, our parents and our grandparents and their parents' parents, if it's under the mattress, that's where it's safe. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to yield any return. You spend it, you know where it's going and, and that's it. Mm. I mean, as, as, I, as I said initially when I started, I, I actually think that's a misconception. Um, you know, if, if we look at our grandparents and parents, for example, they, they try to ensure we all went to school. Um, and how did they afford that? They, you know, they, they were trading livestock um, and, you know, grains and so forth. Um, but money went in and money came out. Um, and on, on many occasions, more money came out than what went in. Um, so it may not have been, you know, investing on the Namibian Stock Exchange into a company like MTC, um, but investments were made. Um, investments were made into education, into livestock, into, you know, um, land, into, into you know, uh, production, mm -hmm. um, agricultural mm -hmm. production systems and so forth. So I think, um, you know, where, where we do lack is more understanding of, you know, the more formal, um, the more formal investment vehicles right. that, are, that are available. But I think conceptually, um, I really do believe that we, we have an understanding and a culture of investing, um, you know, forward looking and, 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 you know, yeah, forward looking and trying to understand, um, you know, what, how to essentially uh, cover ourselves in the future and ensure that, you know, for, we're ready for, you know, whatever the future may bring. That's an interesting point you make, because mm. I think also young people, when we think of investing, in, and it's your first time, you know, venturing into those types of waters, you think of a, a formal financial institute, that's who you, who you need to approach, and you, you trust them with your money and mm. your, 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 you know, investment uh, dreams and goals. Um, and, and I think also that's intimidating, having to go that route. For somebody who just wants to start out and, you know, put away a little bit of something and, and grow into really investing and the investment culture, what is it they can, they can do? do? Would your local bank perhaps offer you uh, something in terms of investment you know a small package or something that you can you can start with or, or what would your advice be as to how mm. to how to get started I think before you even start spending any money I would advise that everyone learn as much as they can investing looks simple uh, you know on, on the surface but I think the, the more you learn about it the more you realize it's a really complex art mm. um, I wouldn't even call it a science it's more an art because um, there's no there's no perfect investment strategy, um, which is actually what makes it beautiful. Um, you know, uh, so I think uh, rule number one would be learn as much as you can. Right. Uh, try to acquaint yourself with you know the core principles um, and so forth. And thereafter, I actually wouldn't recommend that you know individuals manage their own money actively. By that I mean I wouldn't recommend uh, you know a, a, a person unless you are a professional in the space, Correct. Um, you know, go on the NSX or the JSE or whatever exchange and try to, you know, manage your own portfolio. Um, it's a very, very easy way to lose money. There's a reason that, you know, there are professionals that get paid to do this. Uh, you know, they sit behind laptops and computers eight to five. Um, so it's a full time job managing money. Um, and I always tell people that I wouldn't want, I don't want people to, you know, lose their hard earned money, especially in uh, trying economic times like these. So I would really, really recommend, um, you know, finding an, an expert to speak to. Um, there are a number of financial services companies that offer those services. Um, I mean, I could list a number of them, Old Mutual, Cirrus Capital, IJG. Um, for your, I mean, for your, your, your typic, typically your retail investors. Um, yeah, so the, you have, you have I, could, I could go on and on uh, in yeah. terms of listing them. So um, do your and research. And I would really advise that you, you do your research and you actually speak to professionals and understand um, understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, you. Another thing that I would also suggest is, you know, because uh, I think a lot of people, um, there are a lot of opportunists in the country um, who will sell you investment products. But I think check with the regulators. NAMFISA has a comprehensive list on their website on, you know, who licensed service providers are. Um, have a look at those. Um, if you have any concerns, you can call the regulator Thank and you. they will let you know if 
you know, this is a legit business that you're, gonna, that you're about to give your hard earned savings to. That's a good tip. Thank yeah. you so much, Chetuna, for joining us this evening. Lovely having you here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me once again. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back with more conversation.